You are listening to the JJ Podcast, where discussions with people from all walks of life are being held. Hello, everyone. This is Abdul Anajar with another episode of the JJ Podcast. Today, I'm hosting Professor Joshua Stacker. Uh, professor Stacker is a professor at Kent State University. Uh, he's an expert in Middle Eastern politics. He, uh, he's been to Egypt. He spent uh, close to 10 years in Egypt. Um, and he's an author of uh, two books, Adaptable Autocrats, Regime Power in Egypt and Syria, and his most recent one, uh, Watermelon Democracy, Egypt's Turbulent uh, Transition. It is uh, more than an honor to have uh, Professor Stacker on board. Uh, Professor Stacker, thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Bella. Thank you. Uh, so just before I even, we, we, uh, just before I started recording, I was, um, uh, my Yemeni friend brought me some tea and uh, I just wanted to give him a shout out because it was pretty tasty. And uh, the one who served it to me actually is, is, is my program director. So shout out to her as well. Uh, I don't know if you had tea before or the Yemeni tea rather, Professor Stacker. Of course. You've had that. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good stuff. Um, so um, I want to first, you know, at least uh, talk to you or at least hear from you about the uh, – your background with, with respect to Egypt, uh, you got your, your bachelor's degree from the U.S., um, but then you, you decided to move to Egypt. You spent, I don't know, close to 10 years there, and um, you know, you're know you very, very involved in Egypt. So perhaps we, we can talk a little bit about that. You know, I'm very interested in knowing about you know a little bit of history before we jump into uh, talking a little bit about uh, what's going on in Egypt right now and a little bit about your book. Uh, so we can probably uh, you can probably share with me in the audience uh, the history behind you know what what brought you to Egypt. What was you know what was the inclination that drove you there? You know, I would answer this question differently every decade. Uh, when I went to Egypt, I had just finished my undergraduate at a small liberal arts college in in Pennsylvania. And uh, I grew up in a, a small town uh, where a lot of generations of my family had lived. And uh, it was a pretty integrated town. Like the high school I went to had a lot of different kinds of people. Um, and uh, when I went to college... Pretty much the first week I was on campus, uh, I, I, you know, I was told that there were only like 13 or 14 percent African Americans it made up the U.S. population, and I just couldn't believe that. Um, and the professor basically told me, like, go look around on campus, right, and and see that there's the, you know, there's hardly anybody of color here. And I did that, and I, 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 it started me on a sort of reflective path about sort of what I was learning and what I wasn't being what I wasn't being taught, right? And so I didn't know what I wasn't being taught, but I knew that I did, wasn't getting the full story. And um, as things worked out at that small college, I kept doing more and more international things. So I was uh, first an English major, and I was interested in sort of British literature. Um, and then, and then when it really got interesting for me is when I picked up a history major and I was very interested in America's role in the world and also learning other, about other places. Um, so this was like 1994 to 1998. So there, there wasn't very much, uh, Middle East, uh, access to Middle Eastern studies or anything like this, at least where I was. Um, and, um, I went studying abroad, uh, my senior year and, uh, one of the places that we stopped was Egypt. And the second I got off, uh, on the, in, into Egypt, uh, it was, uh, a mind altering experience. Uh, the traffic, the noise, the pollution, the sort of how the society was structured, and um, when I was there, this is November of 1997, um, the uh, terrorist attack by the Gamma Slamea at Hatshepsut Temple in Luxor happened. And that kicked off a big, you know, conversation about the role of Islam and violence and terrorism. Um, and it, it, the conversation wasn't anything like what I had experienced in Egypt. Um 
And so, I, I mean, I basically called my parents from there and said, like, look, they have this American University in Cairo, and, like, this is where I'm coming after I'm done. And my parents said, okay, you know, that's fine, whatever. I don't think they really believed me. And so when I came home, uh, when I got back to the States and back to Pennsylvania, I mean, I was like a laser. I was reading anything and everything uh, about the Middle East. Um, and I was interested in um, the peace agreement that Jordan and Israel had just signed. Um, and um, I, I, I wanted to learn Arabic. And so... I had to find some priest that was at some small church like 20 miles away in a town called Claysville. And he had lived in Nasser's Egypt. And so, you know, I, I would pay him a little bit of money and he would teach me a little bit of Arabic. And I mean, I might have had 10 or 12 words by the time I got on the plane. And I always joke that if I would have known how little I've known what I was doing, I would not have gotten on the plane. Right. So, but I ended up in Egypt and, um, it was a really sort of transformative time, not only for me personally, but also Egypt and, and, and the world, right? So the first time I saw a protest uh, in my life was in Cairo um, after uh, Bill Clinton ordered the bombing of the pharmaceutical um, company in Sudan. Uh, and uh, these Egyptian students at the American University in Cairo were like rallying and going to do a demonstration. And uh, one of my Egyptian friends grabbed me and we went to the top of the library at AUC and looked down on the street at the protest. And the riot police showed up and basically told them to leave the street because they were blocking traffic. And the students said no. And then they beat the crap out of them with batons, like back on the campus. Right. And, and then that was it. Uh, and and so, you know, I was just busy in Egypt for those first couple of years, taking classes, learning Arabic. I was at the Arabic Language Institute, which was kind of like a high school Arabic. Like it was like, you know, nine to three with like 40 minutes off for lunch and lots of homework and all that stuff. And uh, I was pretty homesick that first semester. And I remember like calling home and my dad saying like, look, this sounds like it's like too much for you. Like just get on the plane and come home. It's cool. You don't have to worry about it. And I uh, knew that if I went home, that like that was going to be it. So uh, in January, I bought a ticket to Lebanon, flew into Beirut, um, and then made my way back to Cairo through Syria and um, Jordan, and then um, Israel, Palestine, and then back back to Cairo. And I remember pulling back up to Cairo and like really dreading the idea of like. Like, oh, man, Beirut was so nice, and the food was so good in Syria, and Amman was so much more manageable than Cairo. Um, and, and, and so, you know, that that was sort of my introduction. But, you know, as things happen, you know, as I spent more time in Cairo, I, I sort of got my Cairo timing down, and um, I had a wide array of networks and friends. So I had friends that were revolutionary socialists. I had friends that were in the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, I had friends that if they weren't in the brotherhood, maybe lean towards Islamists, which, you know, that was fine. Um, and so I was just kind of drinking it all in and, and talking to everybody. And, and I didn't realize it at the time, but I was learning from them. I was learning so much. And I guess that if, um, I'm 46 years old, I guess if I was going to answer that question today, like, why'd you go to Cairo? The answer would be completely different. It would be, uh, I, I grew up in a in a world that I didn't make a lot of sense to me and the stories that I was being told. I didn't have any vocabulary to kind of um, break that down or understand it. And so really Cairo became a place where I learned about life. And um, because I had felt like I hadn't gotten the whole story from where I come from and the country I come from, um, you know, I would like look at the poverty and inequality in Egypt and, and then like connect it to the U.S. policies and, and, and whatnot. Um, and so, you know, I, I mean, and as I lived there longer and longer, I ended up being there nine years from 1998 to 2007. Um, you know, I mean, some of the experiences I had were just amazing. Like I had revolutionary socialists take me to a talk by Tariq al-Bishri about the 1923 Constitution. and um, I just remember my mind being blown and opened up and, um, 
you know, I had I had privileged access. I could pretty much reach out to people and they would meet me, even though I, they had no reason to meet me. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the JJ Podcast. Be sure to share it with all your friends and subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the content.